The Archdiocese of Toronto and the National Catholic Broadcasting Council. Through the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board presents Sunday TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Sunday TV Mass on this the 19th Sunday of Ordinary Time. My name is Father Dan Donovan. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contribution of three donors. The first is Karen Duda from Palm Coast, Florida on Thanksgiving in celebration for her brother David, who's celebrating his birthday today. David is for her an angel who is always there to help. We pray too for those who are homebound, sick, lonely, afraid, or sad. May the daily TV Mass be a source of strength and light for you. Remember, you are never forgotten by God. The second is the Cousy family from Scarborough, Ontario, for the repose of the soul of Salud Fernandez, in thanksgiving for abundant blessings received and for special intentions. The third is the Moisen family from Humboldt, Saskatchewan, for the repose of the soul of their mother, Imelda Moisen, and the intentions of the living and deceased members of their family. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us now acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whom, taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. When Elijah reached Horeb, the mountain of God, he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. The word of the Lord. is a 
at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Steadfast love and faithfulness will Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground. And righteousness will look down from the sky. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Righteousness will go before him and will make a path for his steps. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are children of Israel, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs. And from them, according to the flesh, comes the Christ, who is over all. God be blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Immediately after feeding the crowd with the five loaves and two fish, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain to pray by himself. When evening came, he was there alone, but by this time the boat battered by the waves was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, Jesus came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started to walk on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise the Lord. Jesus. 
In the incident described in today's gospel, the disciples have set out on what should have been a simple crossing of the Sea of Galilee. A strong wind, an adverse, strong and adverse wind, however, has arisen and is preventing them from making any headway. The way in which Matthew tells the story invites us to relate it to ourselves, to the church, and to humanity as a whole. Take heart, Jesus says to the disciples. It is I. Do not be afraid. The journey we find ourselves on, like that of the disciples, is not always an easy one. At different times in our lives, we all experience what, what it means to be afraid, even terrified. War, violence, hunger, poverty, natural disasters like earthquakes, floods, wildfires, a pandemic like COVID-19. Such things can rob us of whatever peace and sense of well-being we might have achieved. On reading and hearing today's gospel, most of us can't help but focus on the person of Peter, on his presumption, on the severe judgment of Jesus about his lack of faith. What we should do, however, is focus on Jesus and on his saying. The reading of this passage in the liturgy invites us to see in what happened then a foreshadowing of the way in which the risen Christ continues to come to us in the midst of darkness and storm. To us, as to his disciples, Jesus says, do not be afraid. It is I. In the text from which today's first reading comes, God has directed the prophet Elijah, Elijah to go to Mount Horeb, another name for Mount Sinai. There he says he will speak with him. What then unfolds is reminiscence of the experience of Moses. He too encountered God at the holy mountain and received from him instructions about the covenant he would soon establish with the people of Israel and about the role that Moses was to play in regard to it. To emphasize God's power, the incident unfolds in the midst of thunder and storm, fire and lightning, earthquake and wind. Elijah's experience is of a different nature. God encounters him not in the context of an overwhelming manifestation of the divine power or of the power of nature, but in what the prophet describes as pure silence. Something happened to Elijah at that moment, something that prepared him for the message that God was to deliver to him. The silence opened his heart and created a space in it in which God's word would be able to take root. The, remind, the, book, the, the reading reminds me of a book of meditations I read for the first time some 50 years ago by the German Jesuit theologian Karl Rahner. The literal translation of the German title is Words into Silence. Although some people experience silence as something negative, as an absence, an absence of voices, of music, of nature, of the ebb and flow of urban life, for Rahner and for the mystical tradition not only of Christianity but of all the world's major religions, silence is something positive. It is not empty but brimming over with life and energy. It draws us into itself and as it does, fills us with a sense of peace and acceptance. In the silence, we are invited to encounter God. If this is true of our relationship to God, it is true in an analogous way of our deepest and most cherished human relationships. The richer they become, the more natural do we find the silence in which our words, to which our words so often lead. When we emerge from that kind of silence, what we say tends to be less superficial, more meaningful, more helpful to others. If today's first reading invites us to be silent and in silence to enter into the silence of God, our responsorial psalms suggest the kind of words that take on new meaning as we hear them against the background of that silence. Let me hear what the Lord our God will speak, for he will speak of peace 
to his people. God continues to speak to us through the words of Scripture and in a more intimate and personal way in prayer. In the most common form of prayer, we use words to praise and thank God to seek his help. The words we use can be spontaneous and personal, or they can involve a fixed formula like the Our Father or the Hail Mary. The experience of Elijah suggests that what we should look for, that we should rather look for God, not in the great and dramatic events of history or of nature, but in those quiet moments when we forget our concerns, lay aside our electronic gadgets, and in silence seek the face of God. If we do, we can be sure that in one way or another, he will reveal himself to us. Let us now profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And now a simple prayer for those in the daily TV Mass community who have asked to be included in our prayer intentions book, especially those seeking peace in their families, in good times and in bad. Let us pray to the Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. By the mingling of this water and wine, become partaker of his divinity, who became partaker of our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Gracious God, we ask you. Wash me from my sins, cleanse me from my iniquity. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you firm formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you with all your saints, with one heart, bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels as in joyful celebration we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may we merit to be cores, eternal life, and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us give one another the sign of peace. peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. With those of you at home, join with me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you were already there, I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Yes. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. If you're interested in making monthly donations using the pre-authorized checking method, please call our office at 1-888-383-6277 for details. Appear and keep